there there is a push where where people say there's a term where people say it, it's it's bring back bullying right <laughs> okay so i would i would be Guys, I already told y'all I'm going to be very real and transparent. I agree with that statement to an extent. The reason why is because what bullying is going to teach your kid at a, you know, at an older age or whatever, at, at, at any point that they're eclipsing is how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. At some point, we have all, you know, unless you was a bully. I mean, one of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you either the bully or you're getting bullied, you right, know? Right, right. <laughs> but we, we have all dealt with bully, uh, bullies. You know, yeah. and it's something that we have had to overcome, whether it's verbally, whether it's through fights, whether it's through, you know, talking it out or whatever it is, we've we've overcome it. And to me, that's adversity in a lot of different situations mm-hmm. that kids need. Yeah. They need they need. And, you know, but to answer your question, me personally, if you're talking about a mom and a dad, I think somebody has to be. Good cop, bad cop. Yeah. That, to me, is the perfect balance. Yeah. Yeah. Someone at some point. Sometimes it's the mom. You know, yeah. sometimes, you know, it's it's me that's the, that would be the soft one of mm-hmm. the crew. And it's the mom, like, no, you you know. And then vice versa, sometimes it's just like, oh, no, your dad. You know, and it's the dad that is. Yeah. And then that's when the mom comes in and is the nurturer. Hey. Dreaming how dreamers do most of my life feel like deja vu Even when the pressure's on, I'm careful how I make my moves Mumba mentality, I ain't come here to play to lose Why would I play with you, but uh, if you made me choose I'ma go with me, you down to go with me Of course it won't be perfect, it'll feel complete to say the least What's up, what's up, we're back again and again This is your girl Shar. this is T.O. and this is Mike what it this do? Is all things considered, the podcast episode three. Please follow us on TikTok and Twitter. We are ATC the podcast on Instagram. We're all things considered the podcast. Give us a follow and of course subscribe. All right, let me start out by asking my dear friends how they are. Tio, how was your week? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I mean, work has been good. Family's been good. My Mavericks gave us a fighting chance. You know what I'm saying? I know it's it's men's mental health month, so I appreciate the check-in. But I'm I'm feeling good. I'll say on one to ten, I'm about a, a solid eight at least. All right, you got you got a little bundle on the way. Are you feeling a little pressure? Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. You know, a lot of people. This is number two, so you know the first go round, it's a little nerve. You know, a little nerve wracking. You don't know what type of father you're gonna be, and but I'm good at this. Yeah, so I'm, 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 way, I'm way less nervous about it. I'm, I feel more prepared, just kind of ready to be on the other side. You know what I'm saying? I love this confidence. He said, I'm good at this. If babies could talk, we would ask, we would ask the little babies hey, for real. Can talk. Ask them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how about you, Mike? How was your week? How you feeling? I had a good week. A good week. Good week business-wise. All, all the operations is, is, is rolling. No, uh, no bombs anywhere. You know, so <laughs> that's good. Um, you know, mental wise, I'm actually the opposite from from T.O. This is my first, you know, you know, first daughter. So she turned one in April. Aww. So, you know, I'm kind of going through that phase of, um, you know, you just being kind of a your identity being uh, being a dad, <laughs> not really doing anything and ain't traveling anywhere in the, in the last you know year, hey, you know, on. so. <laughs> So, uh, but I'm I'm going through that phase. It's, it's actually getting a little easier as you know as time goes and progresses. She started be running everywhere and breaking stuff. Mm-hmm. And, did you, you baby know, proof so. the house yet? We did, Woo! but uh, mine is just figuring out new creativity things yeah. to, to to do and yeah. throw. You got to start so. baby proofing things you didn't know could be baby proof. That this point, absolutely, you know what I'm it's crazy. Absolutely, wow. Well, yeah. What about um, you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. You know, moms, the dads hold it down, but the moms, I'm always going to say we're the real MVPs. But okay we're going to we're gonna focus this on our dads. <laughs> and to T.O.'s point, he brought it up. This is Men's Mental Health Month. So shout out to I, all hey, of our men. I didn't yes. even know we get a month. I thought we get three days. I ain't even, yes. heard, I ain't even heard of this month. Goodness, right? Is, it, is it June or July? Is it, well, it's in June. We are in June. And you know what? I love that because I feel like I did not know that. You guys said you did not know that. But it seems like this particular year for Men's Mental Health Month, I have seen this 
all over social media, yeah, which yeah. is why I know about it. And I love, I love, love, love that we are bringing attention to this. Yeah. Um, I, the men are the backbone. I feel like all of us are very traditional in the Bible. The men is the backbone. Yep. They're the head of the household. Mm -hmm. So they do take a lot of it and they just make sure we're okay. But we do need to look at our husbands, our brothers, our fathers, everybody, and just check on them every now and again um, and make sure that they are okay. Yeah. So speaking of, this is one positive I would say about social media is that they did bring light to this. This is something we did know. So we're going to give... Social media, it's positive credit for this. But just speaking of mental health and social media, T.O., tell us how you feel that affects people nowadays with how big social media is getting. There's definitely, um, it really depends on how you use it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got people who use their social media to spread positivity and light and in, in, in situations. Um, and on the flip side of that, you've got, miserable people online who hide behind a keyboard and just spew hate and things like that. So when it comes to how it affects me and just people in general, I think a lot of that has to deal with how you were raised, how you were brought up, your character, um, your ability to see BS when, when you see it yeah. and not think that's a reflection of what's reality. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. For my, just speaking for myself in general, I feel like I've always been able to disconnect the two and not become so bogged down by what social media is telling me that it really affects my mental health. But there, there is a certain aspect of media, kind of, you know, what you consume in the media and how that shapes who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fortunately for myself, though, you know, the way my parents raised me, the, the circles that I have around me, I don't let it affect me as much to ruin my day or brighten my day. I stay even killed pretty much through all things. But that is an interesting topic just to kind of figure out how social media and that con the consumption of that, how that, uh, that shapes the person that you are. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I'm curious, Mike, with, with yourself, of course, we've got different angles to look at this between ourselves as people, um, our kids and different things like that. What's kind of your thought process in terms of media consumption? And right now we're talking social media how that shapes who you are as a person. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it has to be, you know, too much of one thing is never good, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think people have to learn to, you know, take breaks from social media. Um, even myself, sometimes I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a full-time entrepreneur, so I'm, like, on my phone, like, 24-7, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. you, you have to. But... Um, from a social media aspect of it, there's times where I really, you know, have to just decompress and take breaks, you know. And um, especially when, you know, I mentor kids, you know, when, when I was back in my trainer and, 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 you know, mentoring kids, you know, era. And, guys, social media has a very strong impact on kids, yeah. you know, on the next generation. And, you know, I think it's important for people to understand that what I'm noticing is um, just like, you know, T.O., you said we kind of come from similar, you know, backgrounds. It's not necessarily for people that come from, you know, maybe like two parent households, households that are grounded to where people can really envision where they want to be through their parents or yeah. where they want to be through how they were raised. You know, imagine you coming from a single parent household or you being in an environment where you don't have, you know, you know, uh, cars or direct transportation or you don't have the means to do X, Y, and Z. So naturally what you're going to do is you're going to log online and you're going to look at other people that are where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And I think that that a lot of time can be a negative thing in a lot of different situations because what it does is it, it, it feels like you have to expedite your journey. Yeah. And people don't realize that social media is a very fake place. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's fake. People it only show fake. their best. People are only going to show the best. Yeah. And we all do it. We're all guilty. I do it. I think yeah. all of us do it. It's just mm -hmm. like no one is going to log online and show when um, they're broke. Uh, when uh, they can't afford X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. when, you know, they're having, you know, 
problems in their household yeah. or whatever it is, those are the things that you don't see. You see the good things. You see the vacation, the trips, mm-hmm. the cars, the money, the the out the the going out, and you don't see the realness of it. Yeah. You know, so I think it's um it's something that has to be you know, monitored and limited when you terms in terms of kids and in terms of adults, I just feel like people have to realize that social media is an alternative universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Shar? So I definitely agree. Yeah. You have to do it in moderation. And I can be really bad myself about mm-hmm. being on my phone all the time, scrolling. I actually, I was just telling you guys, I just got a TikTok Pretty much for since we have our podcast, but before that, I didn't have it. Um, And also what forced me is that darn TikTok. They know what they're doing (laughs) Uh, before my friends could send me links and I could open up and watch it, even though I didn't have one. Well, they stopped that to where you have to have uh, an actual page uh, to watch. Yes. And so I had got one, you know, maybe days before we, you know, I started with this and and I was going to delete it. Then we got this and now I have to have it. But that was part (laughs) of me like. Okay, I have a Twitter, which I never get on, but Instagram and Facebook, that's enough. Like, I do feel like you need to limit it because, like you said, when you do get on, people only show the best. And when you see people at their best all the time, it sometimes makes you feel bad about yourself. You feel like you're behind. Yeah. You know, you haven't got, I'm not married yet, or I can't afford to go on this big vacation with my entire family yet. You know, I can't wear these clothes. I don't have the Louis Vuitton bag things like that but you don't know what these people are really going through uh on the outside you know you don't know what struggles they've gone through also people may have these things but you don't know what they went through to get it yeah, you know yeah um you know what i'm saying and so you don't know what sacrifices they had to make because people don't show that the one thing that i do like in the way that social media is trending is that i feel like people are trying to be a little bit more relatable since we are bringing this mental health to awareness, I think people are really truly talking about how social media affects their mental health. Right. Um, right and just yeah. talking about mental health in general, our parents didn't talk about mental health like yeah. that. You know, it wasn't, wasn't a topic like it is now. And for a long time, people were kind of embarrassed to admit that they had yeah. these issues. So just talking about that, I do think that people are trying to trend in a way on social media to be relatable Um, but I just think that you do need to take breaks from it and you also need to there's a way that you can have algorithm only follow people that make you feel good that's what I've started to do yeah like make make I'm really big into fitness I've also had a kid my body doesn't look like it used to so whenever I used to follow people that never had a kid and their body looks that made me feel bad about myself so I had to unfollow those people and I follow now influencers who have had a baby. So their their body looks great, but it's like, that's motivation. She's had a baby and yeah. she can look like that. If I yeah. put the work in, that's a realistic yeah. um, thing for me. And it doesn't make me feel bad. And so, yeah. you know, I do think it's a positive thing, though. I do think that I learn a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I don't watch the news as much. My mom gets on to me about that. <laughs> but I, I get my news from social media. I still yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that, and, and, and it's instant, right? Yeah. So I think there's positive and there's negatives. I think that you do just as a person have to monitor yourself, you know, have things. My biggest thing is have things on your timeline that make you feel good. And training and training your algorithm. Like you said, have things on your time. Because, you know, like if I see that Chris Sean and Blueface on my... Not interesting. Yeah, Not interesting. Let me know. unfollow, Click, block, unfollow, yeah. block. Like get this, <laughs> hey, get this low low vibration shit off my damn timeline. Like yeah. for real, and, and and it is it is about you know uh, training your time. Like people don't realize that what you watch on social media, you're entering into the algorithm that's pretty good. Yeah. you know, I was yeah. a marketer by trade. A lot of times we market based off of the algorithms of what people are consuming. If you're not consuming these type of content, you won't even touch what we're going to market to you. You know, so if you're really trying to change what you're consuming, instead of just complaining about it, go on social media, start following the people that you actually want to follow Mm -hmm. and then engage with their stuff. And if you see other stuff that you don't like, you have to, Make sure that you're not watching it, you're not clicking it, and you're also putting not interested in there yeah. so it doesn't pop up I, on your timeline. So I, I agree with you, and even going back to Shar's point, I think everything that we're saying comes with a level of emotional intelligence yeah. and yep. emotional maturity to understand the things that we're seeing 
and how we let them, we let them affect us. You get what I'm saying? So we could see somebody who's in a, a different or better position than we are. How do we perceive that? Is that uh, is there a form of envy or a form of jealousy? Yeah. Or is it come off as motivational? And that's where, you know, where maybe, you know, eight years ago that would have come off as jealousy, whatever the case may be. You're in a different mental space now. Yeah. You now have a level of emotional maturity that you can see that and be motivated by these things as opposed to being jealous of it or even just having a better understanding through life experiences that a lot of the shit that you see on social media is simply not real. It's, it's the highlight reel of people's lives and not mm -hmm. the low points, not the process of getting there, not the hard times that they had to go through to get to that end point. And I think once we get to that level of maturity, we can have a better understanding of, of social media and, and better understanding of how we let it affect us and how we control the things that we choose to consume in media. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree. I mean, everything is edited. Everything is, you know, it, it, we love y'all. We show y'all the real, but we have bloopers. We have things that it, we edit it like, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's just life. Um, and so I just think that people just, it's the emotional maturity. I love that. Like you just need to realize that like, don't, if you have a bad feeling about it, Get it off your timeline. It's yeah. it's truly not worth it. Who wants to scroll and feel bad about about themselves, you know? Yeah. Um, but moving on, if it can affect us adults in that way, mm -hmm. how do you feel like it's affecting kids? And and we all have kids. Like, mm -hmm. how, how do you feel? I know your yours is little, but <clears throat> when it gets time, how 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 do you think you're going to monitor this social media That's with your honestly, little one? A good question, because, like, while my son is very, very young, it's not really anything I have to think about. I do have nephews. I've got yeah, nieces same, who are same. getting to that age yeah. where yeah. they're on social media. They added me on Facebook, and I'm like, hold yeah. on, let me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't got to clean nothing up. But just in general, it is crazy to see they're getting to that age where we were just starting to get on MySpace and, and Facebook yeah. and things like that. So I, I think you have – there has to be some sort of – um there has to be things that are prohibited. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't want them to access everything. Like, like my kid would not have a TikTok where adults have access to them. Yeah. Or a public Instagram page where adults have access to them. Now, granted, we can't we can't stop everything, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we block YouTube, you know, I think there's ways that you can limit things on YouTube to where mm -hmm. they're not consuming that. But there also is a lot of good information, a lot of educational things, yeah. a lot of things that are good for entertainment. So I, I, I think I don't want to say I'm going to invade their privacy, but there is going to be a level of where I'm in your business. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I, and I think it has to be that way until it gets to a certain point where they reach emotional maturity. And, and you can and it's, and it's less about not trusting the kids. It's, it's not trusting some of the things that happen in this world and, and people that have access to them. So. It's, it's limiting the access that people have to them and creating a, a safer bubble because it's never going to be a perfect situation. Yeah. But it is creating a safer space for them to access social media and, and control some of the things that they are viewing. Well, also, too, I mean, also, we don't want, you know, random people to have access to them. But as you said before, the emotional maturity, they mm -hmm. don't have that. So. Yeah. They may not even realize, too, that when they're looking at something, it's not making them feel great about themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just things like that. And it's so hard. You made a good point of, like, invading their privacy because you don't want your kids to feel like you don't trust them. Yeah. But at this point, like, I got to be Papa Bear or Mama yeah. Bear. Yeah. Like, you don't understand these things yet. And mm -hmm. one day you will. But I'm protecting you physically because yeah. I don't want somebody to get you, but emotionally and mentally. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, but it's yeah. just so hard because kids don't understand that yeah. a lot of times, and, you know? And that's why you have to have a stable foundation at yeah. home. Cause that's where it starts before they, yeah. they enter yeah. the world, before they go to college, before they go to school, you've got to set them up for success with the foundation of your household. You get right. what I'm saying? Right. So, so they can see these things and be grateful for what their parents have been able to bless them with or what, you know, God has been able to bless them with. Um, and be appreciative of the season that they're in. Be appreciative of the space that they're in so they're not longing for what looks good on social media and what grabs yeah. their attention so easily. You get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yep. Yep. So um, I, have, I have a nephew, um, and, 
you know, he's he's of the age of in the social media era where he's 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 in he's in there. <laughs> um, you know, he has his own close friends and, Ooh. you know, I get I get my I get my reports on him, <laughs> you know, so I can uh, still monitor what he's doing. This is my this is this is my direct nephew. So the thing about it is, um, number one, my nephew comes from a great household. You know, his mother is a really great mom. And, um, you know, he was raised very well. But he's he's in the cool era. Mm-hmm. You know, he's in the cool era where, like, I, I, I got the latest kicks. Yeah. You know, I dress. You know, now the girls are starting to come. You know, Uh-oh. he's in he's in the teen era. You know, he's in the teen era. You know, he's, he's, he's in that he's in that teen era high school. And. My biggest thing with him, you know, as I was, you know, seeing, you know, where his social media was at was, you know, number one is your athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to at all times understand that the the normal kid your age probably doesn't have the same goals and ambitions as you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you put on the Internet stays on the Internet. Stays. At all time. And, you know. There's a saying when people talk about the last of a dying breed. I really think, you know, when 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 Gunner was talking about pushing P, you know, to me, I really think that a lot of people in this day and age, the days of being a gentleman, you know, the days of, you know, doing what's right and 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 talking people with sense and all that stuff, a lot of times that comes at a later age. It comes later when you mature and when you understand, like, man, that was dumb of me to do, you know, years ago when I was a kid. But sometimes kids don't realize that until Mm -hmm. they get into a much later age. Mm -hmm. So the conversations that I'm having with my nephew now is instead of me getting because because the direct thing that I can do is just. Take a picture of his post and and, and 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 hit him up and be like, man, why you post that, bro? You got you can't put that kind of stuff on, you know, on the internet, bro. You lost your mind, you know. And so you know, and this that whole gentle parenting, you know, that what they say Ooh, we is. That's, a whole, that's that a whole other topic. <laughs> but and I'm 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 low key practicing. If we I'm practicing on my nephew, like let me see if this shit work, <laughs> you know. <laughs> These but, kids now they they want to know why we didn't get a reason why they want to know get why. a reason why at yeah, all. Yeah, you know. So my the way I do it with him is um I don't want him feeling like you know I can't be I can't. I want him to be able to come to me on, with anything, yeah. you know. So instead of me jumping his ass about some things that he posted that I didn't like or, or appreciate, what I would do is educate him that yeah, what you're doing ain't cool or player about it. Mm-hmm. This is what's cool and player. Like my nephew watches the cars I drive. Mm-hmm. He watches how I am with mine and my household. And these are some good positive influences that he's able to see through me yeah you know so i'm i'm teaching him you know he's like man how you, how you one time i i loved it he, he he hit me up and he was like how you put together you know when you when you because he's trying to he, he's starting to dressing and stuff now <laughs> mm-hmm. so he's asking me like you know when you put like what you think about you know so he's kind of he he hitting me up for that kind of stuff so i know he's i'm i'm i having some type of impact Twins, on him yeah. right now mm-hmm. yeah so my biggest thing is if I can educate him that, bro, it's not, you, when you're able to be that person that's being different, like if all your friends are, if you got friends that are drinking and all this stuff mm-hmm. at a young age or mm-hmm. trying to introduce smoking and all that stuff, and you that one lone ranger that's over to the left, mm-hmm. everybody like, everybody want to know who's, who's that. Yeah. Yeah. You're the who, cool guy. Who's that? Who so, you 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 end up being a cool guy? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, so I'll, I'll bring this to you because everything sounds good. Yeah. But we have to remember that we're speaking through adult lenses, mm-hmm. and part of that is the fact that we've been through these experiences. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's very easy to say these things because we've been through it, we've seen it, and we're looking at it from we're past it. But what about when they turn around and say, "Didn't you do this when you were younger? So why can't I do it?" And and you get to the point where they start comparing themselves to others. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If you look at what these kids are doing now for prom, 
like I gotta I gotta outdo that. I'm not about yeah. to let him show up in a in a Bentley and I'm coming in a in a in a Lexus. I got I got I got to pull up to to prom in a Bentley. And we get to the point where even as adults we struggle with comparison. Yeah, and it's a little bit different because again we're on the other side of that and we have a better understanding of these things. But as a kid, you're going to be compared to your peers, and if you don't have that emotional maturity or that foundation at home. It could be it could be detrimental to your mental health. Or like, man, I'm not doing as well as this person, or I, that's what I want to do. So, you know, how do you, you know, especially when it comes to the point where they're doing things that we've done before, do you approach it as, you know, I'm the wise, I'm trying to put you on before you have to deal with the mess that I dealt with, or where is that boundary of letting them figure things out on their own? Well. Number one, these new kids ain't doing what we we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they they they're different. They you know are, what I'm saying? They they're, they're different. Yeah. All right. We I mean, we was we was probably doing it but uh 8 years later, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all are starting to look young, you know what I'm saying? But and technically they're more advanced than we are. They're more right advanced, now. man. It's yeah. just like, bro, slow down. You know what I'm saying? It's going to come. So, you know, even even in my life, you know, um me being able to watch my older brother, you know, my brother got me on five years, you know, so he, he thought he was somebody daddy low, you know, <laughs> yeah. God, God, relax, bro. <laughs> you feel me? So me being able to watch him and see him, you know, the, the type of uh, um, his movement, how calculate, like I'm, I'm such a calculated person and I get it from my brother, you know, like he, he very calculated. He thinks everything out, you know, this is somebody that, you know, we, we went to University of Texas, got this scholarship, was putting work in, made it play 10 years in the league. You know, so I already had that model in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where a lot of people that's in our position go wrong is we somehow, I don't know if it's, we're getting lazy or we get soft on the next generation. We just assume that, but it's just like, we have the experience, bro. Like, mm -hmm. we went through what they're going through right now, yep. and we got to be able to be able to reach back and make sure that they're good mm -hmm. because this is the way, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, it, it's not like, you remember, I know you, you guys remember back in the day in high school, you had people trying to tell you what not to do. Right. What to, and, and you look at them like, okay, well... You know, old head, you old head. You old head, you really yeah. ain't, yeah. you know. But when your old head is bossed up, g doing successful, doing well yeah. for his job, I mean, for for himself or for herself, that's like a mentor to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to lean into that. And so, you know, we're talking about us being the mentors and whatever the case may be. And that kind of goes back to something I was saying earlier when we've got to limit the things that they have access to, whether that's mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. whether that's music or mm -hmm. TV or whatever the case may be. Because for us, while we might be mentors of somebody else, their mentors might be somebody that they see on TV, mm. somebody that they see on the internet. And when you get to compare and it's like, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do what this person doing. Yeah. So I, I do think we have to understand that like, not everybody has that positive role model or person that they can look up to for these positive things. Some we we laughed about Blueface or Krishan earlier like it's <laughs> it's, not, it's a joke to us. Yeah. But there's somebody watching that like, man, yeah. I want to do that too. They yeah. see the money. Yeah. They see the money. Yeah. They see the, the, they clout see the, that comes the clout that comes. Yeah, 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 all that. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Um and speaking of not only just social media and things like that, but that's not only the place where people do have uh, influences. We also get influence from TV. We also get influence from music, yep. things like that. And so I think a big one, though, is music. Everybody listens to music, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter what type of music you, you can listen to, pop, rock, R&B, rap, but everybody listens mm -hmm. to music, you know? And so do, do y'all feel that? music shapes you, you know, into the person that you Ooh, are? That's a good question. You got it? Oh, man. You asked me that question, how old am I? You asked me that question 10 years ago, <laughs> and I would have told you music have absolutely no impact. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. because I would have just compared it to where I am. Mm -hmm. And I would have said, music has no impact. I see music how I see movies. Okay, I can I can turn on a movie right now. I can watch the El Chapo and the you know the the craziest just people just getting their neck slit and go out and turn that assignment in that I got to do on time so I can make my you know I that's how I've seen it back in the day. But now as I've gotten older, what I realize is that was just my experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was just the way I was raised. And one thing that I have to be careful of is understanding that everybody was not raised the same way I was raised. Mm-hmm. Everyone comes from different backgrounds. They come from different households. And sometimes people rely, let's say you weren't raised in the most perfect environment and you have to rely on external forces mm-hmm. that's going to kind of mold and shape how you operate as a man or as a person. Mm-hmm. In this world, there's a lot of people like that too, and there's a lot of people yeah. like that. As I gotten older, I realized, and so now the way I see it is sometimes and it's not. I'm not gonna say necessarily movies, and I think at a much younger age, like my daughter, we kind of limit the amount of exposure she has to, um, you know, TV and all those kind of things. But I think as you get older. Music has a big influence yeah. on okay. you as you get older. Okay. That's my opinion on it. I really do think music, I, I, when you look at people that are happier, when you look at people that have a great impact on life and, yeah. and wake up, you know, uh, you know, with a smile or naturally a little bit more friendly, a little bit more open to meeting new people and new ideas and things like that. If you look at the type of music that they're listening to, the type of music they're listening to, I feel good music. Yeah. Uh, R&B is in the arsenal sometimes, you know, whether it be pop or whatever. Maybe they listen to hip hop, but it's never just straight, vulgar, 100%. I'm a, you know, uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 uh. no. <laughs> and it's just never that. Yeah. And then on the vice verse, when you listen to, when you look at people that are just rap, just hardcore gangster rap, gangster music, these are, most of the time, a particular type of person yeah. that are more inclined to either being about their life or living that type of life. Mm-hmm. So the question would be is, is music really kind of shaping who these people are? And yeah. I think it is to an extent. I, I think personally to, do I, think I, it I think is. to an extent it is. Yeah. But I do think there is the ability to separate entertainment from real life because – Everything's situational. I have my instances where I do listen to the trap music and the <laughs> drill music and all of those different things. I have the instances. I'll be in the gym. I'm listening to Bryson Tiller and R&B. You get what I'm saying? So I, I feel like there's ways to separate that. But that kind of goes back to the conversation that we were having before where it starts with your foundation, the, the character you are. Absolutely. The ability to see life separate from media. So I, I agree with you to the point that there is a level uh, that the point where some of the consumption of the media that you consume will shape who you are, but it goes back to where your foundation is and, and are you grounded in your character, your beliefs, and all of those different things. So, so for me, it, it's been less of an issue because I, I feel like I've been able to jump into multiple spaces where I can listen to R&B, I can listen to hip-hop, I can listen to conscious music, I can listen to drill music, and I'm not going to go turn around and, and, and engage in criminal activities because that's not who I am as a person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think once you develop that level of, of character, it becomes less of a sway of how you move and how you're shaped based off of your media consumption. That's music or TV. I'm not, I'm not going to go watch uh, uh, Training Day and suddenly <laughs> you know, feel the need to engage in criminal activity yeah. or... Or things like that. I'm not. I'm not watching, you know, gang, listening to gang related music and feeling like I'm about to go rep somebody set now. That's just just because that's not how I was raised. My parents didn't. That's not the, the way my parents brought me up. I think that's key though, T. Of, of course. So yeah. the thing. So the, the, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say the same because yeah. I feel like how I was raised. Yeah. When, when I was in the car with my mom. Yeah. It, it was it was gospel music, <laughs> Christian. We, yeah. I didn't start listening to rap music or anything so yeah. I rode with my friends yeah. mm-hmm. and like and, and that has also 
um, carried over to me, like also how you said people, how they feel and, you know, their success or they're more successful. How, it depends on also what kind of music right. that is me. When I wake up in the morning and my daughter knows when I'm driving her to school, when we're getting ready, the first part of my day, I'm not starting off with some, yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right, I got my right, Christian right. playlist on. We're feeling good. We're right. starting our day off positive. God is going to make sure we Absolutely. have a great day. You know, things like that. Um, and that also brings me to the point where you were saying, like, even the kids, you're like, when they're younger, more so TV, the music. But yeah. I'm going to disagree with that because when we think about our kids, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, mm. monkey fell off the bed, roll over. Everything is a song that they're learning. One, two, three, it's song. It's not TV. They may be watching it on TV, but how it's getting in their brain is music. Mm -hmm. So even from a young age, music is shaping them. They're learning these things. And so I have a question for you guys. How do you feel when your kids get older, when you're in those moods where you're listening to this, you know, more rap style music or even R&B that may have a little sexual or cuss words. Like, do you feel it's okay for a baby to be in the car seat one, two, three years old while you're listening to this music or or not? Like, do you feel like it's getting in their brain and shaping them? I, I do you want your little two year old back there saying putting up F that or whatever? Oh, it's yeah. cute. But it's, is it or is it not? For, like, I mean, when people record their kids saying stuff like that, I, I never got down with that. But I, I do think like. There, there comes a level of comprehension where they don't even know what they're talking about. So, but it's getting in their brain, though. Two, three, four. They understand more at those ages than you that's think. That's true. Five. I, I think there, there's a certain age where they start to understand what they're doing and what they're saying. Now, of course, we're all – it comes down to our habits. You know what I'm saying? Because if we're doing it when they're two, we're doing it when they're four, we're doing it when they're six. Right. And we've created um, habits to where they've picked up on these things and they start to understand them because they're getting smarter when we're younger. So it's definitely not something you want to create a habit of. Um, but again, I think just that, that space that you create around your kid and that foundation is going to be able to withstand some of the things that they hear in the world and, and, and they come to you and ask what these things mean. You can provide a better understanding for them. Okay, so to, to basically to answer your question, um, I'm not listening to that shit in the, in the music, in the car with my kids. Okay. I'm, not, yes. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, no, like we, if 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 my if my daughter's in the car with us, we're probably doing like Afro beats. Mm -hmm. You know, Love we're it. doing R and B. Yeah. We're doing something a little bit more soft. I'm not gonna be jamming um, NBA Young Boy and Kodak Black yeah. Yeah. with with my daughter, and I'm, I I don't do that because uh, I know over time they it it does it does mm -hmm. shape like you said. I agree, it does shape. Um, what they hear and everything is repetition. Um, as they start hearing that, you know, you, your your daughter and your your family start hearing these cuss words enough. The next thing you know, they fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, like yeah. over time, they start doing that. So yeah, I I we I limit um, you know what type of um, music I'm personally listening to when I know that. There's kids around and stuff. So. You, don't want, you so. don't want your little baby girl walking around like a city girl at two telling daddy, <laughs> period. <laughs> so, so I got a question, and this is kind of veering from where we at, but it, it's still in the same bubble. Because um, everything that we're saying is like the ideal situation. Like this is exactly how we want our kids to grow up. But there is reality, mm -hmm. and there is the fact that they will leave the nest that you created at home Whew. and be with their friends and be with teachers and be with just their, their surroundings and things like that. So you look at some of the things that have happened where kids, they are growing up and strictly listening to gospel music, as Shar said earlier, and they've kind of been sheltered. Do you think that when you have them in these really, really tight bubbles and, and spaces of comfort, is that sheltering them from what reality really is when they enter the, into the real world? Or do you feel like they're able to maintain that moving forward without you there? That That's always tough mm -hmm. um i feel like a little bit of too much is never good mm -hmm. yeah and a little bit of too little is never good either i think okay. there has to be like a healthy medium mm -hmm. you know a healthy balance you know that we we all know as men the preacher kids be the worst ones all right i'm gonna just say it with it hold up i remember <laughs> Yeah. The preacher kids are the worst one, but but also you know, 
you have you have those kids that have too much freedom that are also equally just as bad. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always those kids that that are just being able to uh, have that that healthy medium between you know their parents being involved and understanding like this is not good, this is not good, but still being able to understand that I raised my kid right. This is the way I raised you, and I'm going to help you to understand that. Um, I expect you to make these types of decisions for yourselves when I'm not there. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that's the way I would raise my daughter. I would raise my daughter to understand these are how, this is how men are. Okay? I I am a man and these this is how I know that we are. Okay? Mm-hmm. This is how to handle these type of situations. There's going to be times where she makes wrong decisions. And I, I, as a dad have to Mm -hmm. understand that that's going to happen. And guess what? My shoulder will be there for her to cry on. Yes. You know, I'll be there to console her. I'll be there to cry on her and we can work through this together, you know, but I'm not going to be that dad. That's going to be just super. All right. No, this is you. You're not, you know, that never ends well. But also, you can't be too loose. You know, I've seen it to where it, it's too loose to where now it's just like, oh, well, I mean, she she know what she she can go. She she good. Go ahead. Go ahead. You you know, now you're too loose, you know. So healthy medium, I think, is just, just the best, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. What you think? I, I agree with that, too. I, you know, my daughter's a little older. She's eight, about to be nine. I'm just going to tell you all, though. These topics, these conversations, yeah. they come a lot sooner than you think because <laughs> wow. the social media is big now. I actually just allowed my daughter to have Instagram. I run it. She does not have it on her t- her iPad or anything. It's only on my phone. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, she's begged me for, like, two years to, wow. like, have a YouTube or yeah. an Instagram. Eight years to, old is crazy. Yes, yeah. to have, you know, but, and it's one of those things where I walk, like, I want her to be able to express yeah, her, yep, yep. her, you know, what she has to say, how she feels. And she does have an iPad and she does see. And that's the thing, too. You know how as adults we look at social media or, you know, even there's artists and we see their success and how we talk about we kind of envy it or we mm-hmm. we want that. Kids are the same. We have kids that are uh artists music artists or right. social media making millions already at my yeah. daughter's age and yeah. younger yeah and she sees that and she sees the things that they're and it's not necessarily that they're bad we talk about monitoring it and i monitor what she watches but some of the stuff that she watches it's not bad a little kid opening up toys yeah. but he's making yeah. millions of dollars yeah. and she knows that's not a bad thing for yeah. her to watch but she also is she's smart and she sees that this person is successful and they're getting these views and they get to talk and, and like she wants to do those things. And so it is a very fine line of walking of like when to say yes, when to say no. Also when you don't want your kid behind, we live in such a technology based world. My daughter had, I not given her an iPad when she was like, I think we gave it to her when she was like three or four, she got her first one. And that seems early, but thank God, because we hit COVID, she started kindergarten in COVID. <laughs> I am a working mom. I was at home taking meetings. She had to navigate her Chromebook herself. And had mm-hmm. she not known how to work yeah. an iPad or something, I yeah. would have been in trouble, you yeah. know? So I feel like that's also a hard thing, too, of, like, trying to stay strict and, and have these boundaries. But also, you don't want your child to be behind. Yeah. And that's just, yeah. that's just a flat-out fact. They... Yeah only use these Chromebooks at school now. That, that is something that we as the older generation, which is even crazy saying the older yeah. generation, have to come to some sort of understanding is that kids are getting more access to information younger. Yeah. And they're starting to get smarter and smarter just as evolution naturally happens. So, at, you know, ability to work technology and things like that when they're younger, there is a lot of value in that. Yeah. As you mentioned, when something like COVID happens and now – kids are doing homeschool on a computer or something like that, there is that value of being technolog- technologically savvy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where if we restrict them from all of these things, they are left behind, like you said. hmm Yeah. I think we as parents have to be very careful, though, um, at understanding that we are the parents. We're mm-hmm. not the friends. Okay? Um, 
you see this more in millennials. Guys, we have to understand that when it's time to enforce things onto your kids, you have to stay strict and stern on the enforcement. And I don't know if because I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because we're becoming parents at a younger age. I don't know if because, you know, with us millennials, we just haven't matured enough to the point where we can parent the kids the way that they're supposed to be parented. But a lot of these kids are moving way too fast and people be like, oh, well, you should only worry about. No, 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 no. Because what happens is your daughter goes to school with my daughter or my kid and it ends up affecting. Oh, yeah. Everybody. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? It, it like, really does. You, you, you can do whatever you want to do in your home, but don't just don't let it affect mine. You know what I'm saying? It's going to. And, and it, it's going to. Mm -hmm. And I, I just feel, I feel that we have to understand that when it's time to parent your kids, like, it, bro, you, you, you have some people's kids that only like to eat at certain restaurants mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, give me a damn break, bro. Like, mm -hmm. for real. Like, I mean... <laughs> My child it's, likes sushi. Wendy's is okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to break it down to you, but we would just perfectly fine if you go to Wendy's or you even if, I mean, you got some people, kids that, I mean, Chick-fil-A is just, oh. Oh, yeah. Chick-fil-A, Raisin Cane's. That's what, McDonald's, ill. Chick-fil-A Chick <laughs> and Raisin Cane. Chick-fil-A and Raisin Cane. My mama would slap me. Bro, what? Yeah. If I went to McDonald's, I was on the dollar menu. I didn't even get a Happy Meal. Like, Fam, yeah. if I went to McDonald's, it was a luxury. <laughs> yes. Because yes. we had food at the crib. Always. Yeah. Always. Oh, no, these kids have expectations these days. Bro, we, we got to understand. Bro, we have to stop trying to, you know, moms, stop trying to act like these parents is your best friend Dads, you need to be more involved in your parents. Every studies and That's statistics has shown that if there is a two parent household, that kid is going to be better off. Okay, mm -hmm. we've seen the debate already. Fathers work harder to get in your kids' lives. Yeah. Mothers stop acting like the father has to work hard to get in the kids' lives. Oof, yeah, do what's better for the kid. If the relationship don't work out, cool. Co parent, do what's best for the kid. You have but to this take whole your emotions out and do like. It's about the kid. It's too many Lord emotions. have mercy. It's too many emotions in the co-parenting. It's about the kid, and that's it. If only it was that easy. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to, I know. To us, it sounds logical, but again, a lot of these people who are parents who don't need to be parents, they don't fully grasp the idea of doing what's in the betterment for the child. Their emotions get involved with the other parent, and it kind of like clouds what's best for the kid and for the sake of. I don't like this person. I don't like how they did me or whatever the case may be. It's unfortunate. And, and the thing is, the person who really suffers throughout all of that is a kid. kid. Is the kid. So I, I'm going to. And I'm it's gonna, a cycle that repeats over and over again. I'm going to I'm going to play a little kind of devil's advocate, but not. But still kind of take it back to the whole mental health thing okay. um, and play a little bit. Because you mentioned that I when you're talking about your daughter, you want her to be able to come and talk to you. Um, if she has an issue or anything like that, right? Yeah. Do you feel like, you know, some of this parenting that is a little bit too, I want to be your friend, is coming from a good place, but it's just not being executed great? Because I don't know about y'all, but I feel like our generation, our parents did a great job and we love them, but did we always feel comfortable being able to talk to them or were we scared? And And we don't, want our kids to feel like that and i think that it's just a rough balance that people are trying to <laughs> to walk mm -hmm. and there some people are doing it and some people aren't because i feel like that it that's a, a lot of us you know not us but a lot of people in our generation need therapy because our parents yeah or we couldn't talk to them or we made we listened to our friends to make decisions because we mm -hmm. couldn't talk to them and now that you know people are having kids they want to have that relationship with their kids but maybe just not executing it the right. right way. Like, do you feel like that could be part of it as well? I don't know about so you. Like, I'm, I I'm, gonna, people... I'm going to. So there is a push. OK. And I don't I don't I'm not going to I don't know 100 percent agree with this, especially as it relates to kids. Yeah. OK. Um, but there there is a push where where people say there's a term where people say it's it's bring back bullying. Right. <laughs> Okay, 
So I would, I would be, guys, I already told y'all I'm going to be very real and transparent. I agree with that statement to an extent. The reason why is because what bullying is going to teach your kid at a, you know, at an older age or whatever, at, at, at any point that they're eclipsing is how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. At some point, we have all, you know, unless you was a bully. I mean, one of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you either the bully or you're getting bullied, you right, know? Right, right. <laughs> but we, we have all dealt with bully, uh, bullies, you know, yeah. and it's something that we have had to overcome, whether it's verbally, whether it's through fights, whether it's through, you know, talking it out or whatever it is, we've, we've overcome it. And to me, that's adversity in a lot of different situations mm-hmm. that kids need. Yeah. They need, they need. And, you know, but to answer your question, me personally, if you're talking about a mom and a dad, I think somebody has to be good cop, bad cop. Yeah. That to me is the perfect balance. Yeah. Yeah. Someone at some point, sometimes it's the mom, you know, yeah. sometimes, you know, it's, it's me that's the, that would be the soft one of mm-hmm. the crew. And it's the mom like, no, you, you know, and then vice versa. Sometimes it's just like, Oh no, your dad, you know, and it's the dad that is. And then that's when the mom comes in and is the nurturer. So you having that dynamic with your kid where they're understanding that they're going to have a parent that is firm. That's telling you that is a no, you know, you cannot do that. That's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. That grade that you just made, you know, we know from our parents, like you bring a bad grade in the house and you're going to hear about it. There's no, oh, uh, uh no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, no, no, we yeah. don't. That is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. You know, go to your room right now. Here I, and uh, find the, the, the best belt you can. <laughs> <laughs> Get that switch off the tree. <laughs> I, I think within all of this, there is finding that perfect balance. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like you mentioned earlier, I think there's past traumas that a lot of us deal with, especially... Yeah. You know, we can speak to this even more so in the Nigerian household and not having the best levels of communication with our parents. Our parents mm-hmm. were very big on making sure their kids were brought up in a good household, making sure they had good character, making sure they went to school and got their education, making sure we provide for them and make sure they don't they don't have to look to, to find their next meal. Yeah. My parents did an amazing job at that. Love them to death. I don't know how open communication was between my siblings and my parents and being vulnerable enough to have um, certain conversations on emotion or just growing up and things like that. So I'm never going to say I'm my kid's best friend because that's, that's not what we're doing. You feel what I'm saying? But I do think there's um, that level of, I can talk to my parents about anything. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of value in that, that helps them grow up to be that person that instead of going to, the internet for advice, right. going to their friends, friends for advice. Yeah. You can go to your parents who are going to have your best interest at heart. Correct. And going to be able to guide you in the best way that they know how and or make sure they're going to take care of you. So I'm not going to be my, my kid's best friend, but the, I, I definitely want to raise them to the point that they feel comfortable to be able to talk to me about all things, even things that I'm not comfortable about. But there is that value of creating that dynamic and that relationship as they get older that they can do that. I agree. I'm with that. I, I I will admit my faults, and that's a fine line, like, between me and my daughter. And I also feel like I was a single mom for a very long time, for mm. six years. So it was just me and her. That was, like, yeah. my little mini best friend. We just, yeah, it was me yeah, and her in yeah. apartment. She didn't even ever sleep in her own room. She always yeah. slept with me, like, like. That's my homie, but also she know, like, don't play with me. She, she tries <laughs> yeah. to get a little yeah. sassy. She's yeah. growing up, maturing, mm-hmm. you know, being around other friends. Good luck, Mike. Yeah. Eight years old, they think they should wear crop tops. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, but it is a very fine. And I'm going to throw this out before we wrap up, too. I don't know how y'all's parents are, but these grandparents, they don't help. Yeah. My mom was extremely hard on me when yeah. you say bring home day, if i got a b soft on the kid I'll, yeah. I, yeah oh my gosh it was mm-hmm. the end of the freaking world mm-hmm. like my daughter oh my i try to get on her and i'm being mean yeah. i whoop her and how dare you and i got 
But how did that like, shape you as a woman now, I, I, though? That your great, mom though. was your I, mom was not accepting to that beat. It was now great. Now the, the millennials will will be oak. Oh, you got an eighty. Oh, yes. let's go get. I, and my mom too. My mom's like, oh, she. I'm like, wait, <laughs> I cannot get a B, and you're just so. Well, it's harder. It was hard then. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, it's just it's it's very hard too because I feel like grandparents do are they're a blessing and they have a lot of influence, but they do have a lot of influence. So whenever I'm trying to have my moments, yeah. or I'm trying to be strict, and then what is my mom? My daughter calls my mom Lolly. Well, I'm gonna call Lolly. I'm gonna. Ooh, she tells me. I'm see that boundaries. Oh yes, those boundaries. I, I'm gonna call Lolly. Oh, and don't let me, because then it's between me and my, my mom. If I say no, you can't call Lolly, and Lolly finds out that finds out that Ooh. I didn't let because we are adults. But the way that we were Sheesh. raised, we still respect our parents. So I still, my mama. If my mom is upset, I'm in trouble, and I know it. I don't yeah. care if I'm 34 or not. I'm not. You know, I still yeah. respect my mom, and she yeah. is still the elder of yeah. me and I'm still going to listen to her, you know? Um, but anyways, we're going to, we, we getting at the time. We're going to wrap this up with our original question because this was a really fun question and a good topic. And we want to hear how you feel about it. And that's does music shape who you are as a person? We want to know what types of music you listen to comment. Let us know if you feel like it's shaped you as a person, even if you have any examples of something that you heard in you a song. You listening to that sexy red yeah, or you listening well, what you what you listening and, to? Yeah, go 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 Rilla. Something. Hey, yeah. Lotto. Lotto. Hold you on. was beefing with a girl and you was going to let it sit. Then you heard a song and you was like, "No, I'm finna go tell her to meet me in the streets. We want to know about it." Okay? All right, again, my name is Shar. This is my boy TO and this is my boy Mike. This is all things considered the podcast episode 3. Hit that like button, subscribe, let us know where you're from. We out. Peace. We out. Hey. Dreaming how dreamers do most of my life feel like deja vu. Even when the pressure's on, I'm careful how I make my moves. Mumba mentality, I ain't come here to play to lose. Why would I play with you, but uh, if you made me choose?